We are back with Egyptian billionaire investor and developer Naguib Sawiris. Naguib, what do you think of Donald Trump, the president of the United States? The market here, Naguib, is up 15% since Election Day. A lot of people betting on his economic policies. How do you see it? You know, I, I, I sympathize because I'm a businessman that also tried to get into politics. And uh, I, what I learned that politics and business are two different things. You know, in business, you run your company, you give the orders, you're, a, you're a, like a dictator. You can decide on every single you're step. The boss, and sure. You don't give a damn about any. Yeah, you're the boss, you know. So when you move into politics and you believe that you can do the same, uh, treat, uh, you know, like rule uh, uh, or do politics the way you do business, you know, it doesn't work like that because in politics you practically have no authority. The Congress, the Senate, senators have most of the authority, you know, and you need to, if you want to decide on something, you need to make sure that you have the backing of all these institutions. You need to have the backing of your party. So with Mr. Trump coming in, I think it will take some time until he uh, makes this experience, you know, but in honesty, he comes with a very good vibe because I believe that he, uh, Washington needed some shake-up. You know, it was full of bureaucracy. Uh, things are worth going too long. There is also corruption, and it has been like uh, civil servants all the time. No entrepreneurial spirit. Nothing was happening. You know, even on the action side. You know, with all respect to Mr. Obama, I hold him responsible for for all what is happening now and the flourishment of ISIS and the terrorism because he said no boots on the ground, he said there is a red line in Navy and then when they used the chemical uh, water he didn't react, you know, I think Mr. Trump would be a different person, you know. I think he should, we should give him a chance, you know, but he needs to work with all the constitutions and understands he, he can't uh, uh, run the politics like he used to run his business. That's my point, you know. Yes. Uh, frankly, I like him, you know. Yeah. Now, so, so you, you do equate what went on and the acceleration of ISIS to President Obama. You basically say his leadership allowed them to flourish. Maybe that was why the Middle East countries, the leadership, particularly in Saudi Arabia, uh, really rolled out the red carpet for President Trump when he was there two weeks ago. Do you think that was more a testament to Donald Trump, or was that a, a testament to they are happy for a change away from President Obama because of everything you just mentioned? I think it's both, you know. I mean, you see, in the past, our excuse behind not going after terrorists, they were in Bora, Bora and they were in Afghanistan. We didn't know where the hell they are, so we couldn't go after them. Now we know where they are. They're in Sirte, they're in Raqqa in Syria, and Sirte in Libya. They, we know where they are in Iraq and Mosul. And what do we do? Nothing. The planes do sightseeing tours around the ground, and we're too chicken to go down and get it done. And it's a big mistake because they're coming to your doors. They're knocking at your doors now. So now we know where they are, and we don't do anything, you know. And Mr. O and, uh, Mrs. Obama, no boots on the ground. It's okay, no boots on the ground. They will come to you. So. I think the Arab world is frustrated because, and also during the Obama administration, we believe that the Obama administration supported the Muslim Brotherhood at best, at, mo at most. And we believe that they interfered even in Egypt after the revolution to make sure that the Muslim Brotherhoods uh, come to, to, to rule and so on, you know. So people are frustrated, of course, with that position because we believe in, in the fact that the uh, Muslim Brotherhood are a terrorist organization with all, with all the people who are behind them, you know. Right. I and mean, you, they, and they, they come and they... they she, yeah, and you think the president, President Obama, sided with the Muslim Brotherhood before he sided with the Egyptian leadership. And, and Egypt was and is one of our key allies. Yes, and not only with the leadership, but even with the liberal forces. We were not given a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can claim that the elections in Egypt were fair. They were not fair. They were, the, the Muslim Brotherhood have been there for 80, 100 years and worked on the ground and were, were, were uh, prepared for... For, for this, you know, and when they supported, when the U.S. supported them, they became an out, out, outmost dictatorship, not abiding by the democratic rules that brought them to power, you know. Yeah. So it was the same situation. Before you go, Nagy, would you invest in the United States right now? Of course, that's the best time to invest in the United States. With a president like that who's going to open doors and encourage private sector and entrepreneurism, reduce the taxes, uh, and also stop the excessiveness of abuse of all the environment issues because, I mean, there is a limit to where we go and we, we need to provide jobs, you know, and you can't provide these jobs if we have lunatic saying in the end you can't move in on anything, you know. Yeah. So 
I, uh, I believe in that. I'm a, I'm a capitalist, you know. I'm not denying that. So all the leftists and the communists, they can uh, be angry as much as they want. I don't care. Well, Nagy, we are glad you don't care, and we're happy you joined me today. We so appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Nagy Sawiris, for joining us.